All right, kids, so let's try this again. I have reason to believe that the one with my daughter wasn't that helpful. So let's try this. Uh, first thing we talked about was formula mass. And the formula mass is the sum of the atomic weights of atoms in a molecule or a formula unit. And we discussed the difference between a molecule and a formula unit, the molecule being something that is covalent with only non-metals involved, usually carbon and hydrogen. Ionic is a metal and a non-metal combined or some polyatomic ion like we just named. And then there is this lovely picture of formula going to mass. So let's go on to this. So we have fluorine and fluorine comes as a molecule called F2. And if we're going to do F2, we would go to the periodic table and see that fluorine has a mass. Why? Fluorine has a mass of 19, right? 18.998. So that's basically 19. So we go back to this and we would say that is 19.0. And there are two molecules of them two atoms of it so that would mean it has a total mass of 38 and the units of that are grams in one mole all right then we do this one which is c2h6o2 so we go back to the periodic table we start with carbon you can see carbon here is 12.011 for the mass so we're just going to use 12.0. We're just going to use, so for the carbon, we're going to use 12. Oh, and there are two carbons in this molecule for a total of 24. For the hydrogen, we're going to go with, hello, hydrogen. All right, hydrogen. We're going to go with, on the periodic table, Hydrogen is 1.01, .01, but I said we should just use 1.0 for simplicity. So we use 1.0 for hydrogen. There are six of them in this molecule. So that's a total of six. Oops, let's move that over there so they all line up. And then for oxygen, there is a mass from the periodic table of 16, 15.999, so we're going to call that 16, 16.0, and there are, oops, 16.0, and there are two of them in that, so that's going to equal 32. And then when we add all those up, the 24, the 6, and the 32, we get a total of, so of 62 grams per mole. All right, so hopefully that's clear now that for this molecule, it has a mass of 62 because 24 plus 6 is 30 plus 32 is 62. All right, for this aluminum situation, let's just get that all done here. So aluminum is as you can see 26.982 so we're going to call that 27 so we'll call aluminum 27 here aluminum you'll thank me later when i'm not drawing as much 27 there are two of those so that equals uh 27 is 54 and then the sulfur thing. There we go. The sulfur has a mass on the periodic table of sulfur, 32.06. So we're going to call that 30.1. So sulfur has a 30.1. And there are three, and we'll cover that in a second. So that's a total of, no, that's not true. Not 30.1. My spidey sense is already tingling. So that sulfur is 32.1. Mr. Roach, 32.1. There we go. So times three, 
that would be a total of 96. Three. And then the oxygen. Oxygen is 16 on the periodic table. And in this case, there are nine. We'll discuss that here in a second. And 16 times nine is, let's just do it here so you can see what I'm doing. 16 times nine, that's 144. So going back to this, you can see that oxygen is 16, right? I think I did that, 15.99. All right, so let's go now from current slide. So what we're going to do, if I may, get my pen going. So this three here actually uh, distributes to both the sulfur and the oxygen. So that's how come that is a three for the, for the sulfur. And it's a nine for the oxygen because three times three is nine. Three times the one sulfur is three. All right, so we add all those up and we get a grand total of 54 plus 96.3 plus 144 is 294.3. So I'll write that here, 294.3. All right, so that should be pretty clear at this point how we do formula mass. And here's a picture to distinguish the difference between a molecule, which is non-metal, non-metal for covalent things. It's sort of a freestanding thing. There's my thing. So here, this is a molecule here. This is actually ethanol. That's a molecule. And you can see that the next methanol or ethanol molecule isn't right up next to it necessarily. Whereas when ionic compounds have charged species, so this is minus and this is plus, and all those opposites attract then the next plus would be attracted to the next minus and the next minus to the next plus, and you get this lattice sort of thing. So that's what happens for ionic compounds, which are a metal and a non-metal. And it's sort of an ongoing pattern due to that attraction, whereas molecules don't have so much of that, so they can sort of be freestanding. Uh, we compare that to sort of a Chick-fil-A that's freestanding and a Chick-fil-A that's in a mall or in an airport where it's one of many things in a building. So... The formula unit for an ion is always sort of the smallest repeating pattern over and over again. And a molecule is just sort of where everything begins and ends in a covalent compound. All right, hopefully that makes sense. And then we talked about how it takes a billion molecules to smell anything. For your nose to smell anything, it takes a billion molecules. And that means there's a lot of molecules that gotta go in your nose before you smell anything. So they must be incredibly small and it must take a lot to really start doing anything. And because it takes so much, we came up with this concept of the mole, not we, but Avogadro. So going back, if you say you have a dozen, that means you have 12 things, right? Whether they eggs or donuts or bagels or what have you. If you have a case, that means you have 24 things, bottles or um, whatever would be in a case. If you have a gross, we would say that's always 144 things, so 144 cartons of whatever's. A ream in, you probably don't know this much, but as teachers, we're very familiar with what a ream is. It's 500 sheets of paper. So a mole just means 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd items. And this harks back to what we did with the smoles. Remember the smoles that we did. I counted 62 of these things over and over again, 62 sprinkles or rice or whatever. And they all had the same number of things, but the mass was going to be different each time. These mustard seeds didn't weigh as much as the whole punch things, didn't weigh as much as the rice, which didn't weigh like the whole punch things. These smaller jimmies weren't as heavy as these larger ones. These circular sprinkles didn't weigh as much as these pearls, didn't weigh as much as BBs, right? So even though there are 62 things in every one of these containers, every one of these smoles, small moles, the masses are going to be different. And hopefully that helps. And then here's something that may be hurting you, but just to give you an idea how small a molecule has to be then, if we take a mole of sand, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, or a trillion times a trillion uh, grains of sand, it would be a tremendous structure. It would be much, much bigger than the uh, football stadium where the Houston Texans play, and you'd be able to see it from space. So the point of this is that 
molecules are incredibly small and this is a huge number and we need a huge number to count the ones that actually you can hold in your hand or you can start smelling something or whatnot. So because of that, we're going to do these conversions with compounds now instead of just one element like we did in the previous chapters. And the conversion is going to be the same. If we go from moles to grams, we're going to need the periodic table. The periodic table tells us a mole to gram relationship. We don't need to know in this case when it says how this many moles to grams. We don't need to know how many um, molecules in this case there are in the situation. We don't need to know the number. We don't need to know the number of the things in there. We just need to know how much these weigh. That's all it's asking, right? There's a mole, here's a small. It's just asking how much does it weigh if you had about uh, a quarter of a, of, a, of a mole. So the way we do this is we start with the adding up from the periodic table. So hydrogen is one and we have one of those. So that's one. And nitrogen, if you look on your periodic table, would be 14. There are one nitrogen in here, so that's a total of 14. Oxygen, if you look on your periodic table, is 16. There is a total of three oxygens in this. So 16 times 3 is 48. And then we add 14 plus 1 plus 48. And so that's 15 and 3. Carry the 1. I think that's going to be 53. I'll confirm that. But notice as I'm confirming that, that HNO3, because it has a leading H, this is an acid. And you should remember that for your final. 64 is what this says. 14 plus 40. Oh, clear. 14 plus 48 plus 1. Yeah, 63. That should be a 63. My bad, kids. 63. All right, so that makes sense. Now that we have, that's how many grams there are in one mole of HNO3. So we want to turn 0.275 moles into, into grams. So we want to cancel moles on the bottom. We want grams on the top. So we're going to take that 63 grams on the top. And that's how many grams there are in one mole. So if we multiply the 0.275 by 63, we get times 63, we get 17.3. So that would be 17.3 grams is the answer to that question. And hopefully that makes sense. So in sort of summation, if you're going to go from grams, and there's my thing. So if you're going to go from grams to moles or from moles to grams, you're always going to need the periodic table because that's where you find gram relationships to one mole. If you need to know the number of items, the number of molecules, or in the case of an ionic compound, the number of formula units, then you're going to need this 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. But only in those cases, if you don't need molecules or formula units, you do not need this number. And we said this is sort of like a highway. Every question, see where you're getting on and where you're getting off. So this question here is convert formula units of NaCl to moles. So if we're going to start with formula units, so we're getting on here, right? We're going to start here. We're going to use that number, and we're going to stop here. So we'll be done at moles for this question. So for this question, we have 5.98 times 10 to the 21st formula units. As you just saw from our little chart there, you don't need to know the grams at all. You need to know that one mole, and we always say that one is always going to go with that unit of a mole for a while here has 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd is whatever it is, if it's an item, not mass. So in this case, that would be formula units. So we're going to just divide the 5.98 by the 10.21, and that is going to give us so 5.98 e to the 21 divided by 6.02 e to the 23rd, and that gives us an answer of 0 0.00993, so 0 0.00993 moles. But we did not need the periodic table at all because we just went from molecule, from formula units right to moles. Periodic table was not in that little circuit of 
driving or whatever. This next one, we're going to go grams to molecules. So if we look back here, we're going to get on here, and I'll change my color. Let's go with green. So we're going to get on here at grams, and we got to go all the way to molecules, right? So we got to go through moles and molecules. So we're going to use both the periodic table and the 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd to do that. It's a two step process for this next problem. So grams to molecules. So we have 9.24 grams. In order to convert grams to moles, we're going to need the periodic table. And for sulfur dioxide, sulfur is 32, and there's one. Oxygen is 16, and there are two in that. So that's 16, is 32, and that's 32. And you add them up, and you get 64 grams in one mole. So that's 64 grams in one mole. We put that in the bottom so our grams can cancel. Now we have our one mole on top. We need to go from moles to molecules. And for that, if you go back here, we got our periodic table relationship over here, right? We already did that. So now we need to use a 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. So that is what goes in here. It's 10 to the 23rd. So it's 9.24 times 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd divided by 64. So 9.24 times 6.02 e 23rd divided by 64. And I get 8.69 times 10 to the 22 equals 8.69 times 10 to the 22 molecules. And it should be a big number like that because, again, we don't need much, we need a billion to smell, so it's going to be a huge number of molecules in something that we can see, like 9.24 grams. All right, what is the mass of that? Oh, hey, I had no idea I did that. That's kind of cool. So what's the mass of what our answer is, right? Our answer should have been about 8.7 times 10 to the 22nd. So the mass of that is just the reverse of what we just did. And the reverse of what we just did is, um, here, I'll do it for you. I'll just do it for you. And now I'll do it in blue just because I feel like it. So we have 8.7 times 10 to the 22nd molecules, which was our answer from before. And not surprisingly, if we work that backwards, we know there's 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules in a mole in one mole and then we also know from before that there are 64 grams in a mole for sulfur dioxide 64 grams in one mole and when we do all that we should get the same answer that we started with which is 9.24 grams it should work both ways backwards and forwards so i'm not even gonna do that out I want to just do percent real quick, I guess, because I can. All right, so what percent of these Skittles are green? As you all smarties realized, I did not count these right, so now I've corrected it. There are, if you see here, three green times one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So nine times three is 27. So 27 of these are green. If you add them all up, it's a total of 174. So to figure out the percent green, that would be 27 divided by the 174, right? And that's how you find that out. It's the part of the whole. And that is pretty easy. And that's what we did with these. We weighed each individual piece. And then I put these on the board and told you without even weighing them, figure out the percent they are of purple. I can't remember if I said yellow or whatever. And But you can do that because you know what each piece weighed. And you know there are three purples here and three reds. So you multiplied the amount times the weight and divided it by the amount of the whole. And you could do the same thing here and here. So that's what percent composition is in chemistry. We often want to know by mass what percent something is. And we do it by figuring out the percent of the whole. So in this case here with C3H8, it has a total mass. We would figure that out. So carbon has a mass of 12 on the periodic table. There are three carbons in here. So that's 36 coming from carbon. Hydrogen has a mass on the periodic table of one. Each There are a total of eight hydrogens. 
So that's 8, and 36 plus 8 is 44, I believe. Is that 44? Yes, I think it is 44 grams in one mole. And so the percent carbon would just be the mass of carbon, 36, divided by the total, 44. And that would give you, if I get this here, I think it was 81% ballpark, 36 divided by 44. So yeah, 82 when you round, so that's 82%. And then the percent hydrogen would be either 82, 100 minus 82, because there's only two things here and they have to add up to 100, or you could equally just do the eight divided by the 44 total and get the same 18% for hydrogen. All right, so for something like sodium sulfate, your sodium has a mass of 23. You can see here there are two of them in this, so that's a total of 46. Now I'll change colors and do the sulfur. The sulfur has a mass of 32. There is one of them, so that's a total of 32. And I'll change colors again to green. And oxygen has a mass of 16. And there are four of them for a total of uh, 64, I believe. So when we add all those up, 46 plus 32 plus 64, right? 16 times 4, make sure I got that right. Plus 32 plus 46 is 142. So we get a total here of 142. So if we want to know the percent nitrogen, the percent nitrogen is going to be, or sodium, my bad. The percent sodium is going to be this number here, this 46, the total sodium divided by the total of everything, 142. And that'll give you 46 divided by 142, 32.4%, let's say. Let's say 32.4%, 0.4%. Oops, don't want that, go away. Go away, oops, go away. <laughs> there it goes, all right, purse, nope, doesn't wanna do it. Let's just call that a percent, all right. So the percent sulfur would be, percent sulfur is going to equal the 32 divided by the whole, which is 142. And if you do that, you will get 32 divided by 142 is 22.5, right? Yes, 22.5, so that's 22.5%. And then for the last one, for the oxygen, you can either subtract from 100 because you know the whole thing is going to be equal to 100. So 32.4 plus 22.5 is 54.9. So the difference between that and 100, this should be 45.1. So our answer should be 45.1%. And you can double check that by taking the 64 and dividing it by the mass of the whole, which is 142. And that should give you 64 divided by 142, 45.1%. Look at that. Math works. All right. I'm going to finish here, post this, because I'm pretty sure that's all. And then I'll do an empirical formula, molecular formula one next. All right. Thank you so much. I hope you're having a good weekend.